Now on this video, we're going to try something that I have never tried before. This is the first time I've had any of this material in the shop. It was donated by John Pothier, who got me a sample kit of toll cut, dry cut sandpaper. Now I've been painting my whole life, and traditionally anything I've ever painted got wet sanded, usually with a block, a soft block, or by hand, or some combination of supporting the sandpaper rather than just putting your fingertip on it. This is a material that's made to sand 2000 grit dry, and I have a sample of it and a sample of the block they recommend, and you can watch it in full 4K, adjust your settings in the lower right hand corner. Now the name of the product is Toll Cut. I hope I'm saying that right. I wanna just show the brochure that comes with it. This is really like a sample pack. They give you some 1500, 2000 grit and 3000 grit. For what our purposes are for this is we have a plastic part we've painted a few days ago. It's been drying, the paint should be fully cured and ready to buff. And pretty much all of the paint that I use in my shop on motorcycles, airplanes, or anything, it always gets buffed because I paint outdoors. It tends to pick up dust, little imperfections in the paint. They call them paint nibs. And this is made, the block and the sandpaper is made to remove those little imperfections without using soapy water or any cutting agent. So these are the, this is the little block and it's a hard rubber. It's basically, this comes with the kit. It's basically a, what you would make a tire for a car or a truck out of. This is the sample part. It's a part for my R1 motorcycle. You can see there's little dust spots, little moon craters, little things that you can, in a perfect world, you wouldn't have them. If you had a, a spray booth and a $1,500 spray gun, maybe you wouldn't have it. But, but for me, everything I paint gets buffed. It gets sanded. It gets buffed. There's just a quick little sample. I took one little piece of the sandpaper, put it on the sanding block, and I wanted to see real quickly, it's, it's sticky back. It goes on in a matter of seconds. And it, usually if you were to do this with wet and dry sandpaper, it would just clog right up. Now here's what it looked. The, the number is X2000, it's really 2000 grit. And for my, the compound that I use, the 806065, 2000 grit seems about right. 3000 grit seems like overkill. 1500, you gotta do a lot more sanding, a lot more buffing to get out the sanding scratches. So just, I did a couple little swipes with the sandpaper. I wanted to see how quick it went. I took the worst areas to try to do. Now all of the flat areas, obviously you do with the little rubber block. I don't know how long the sandpaper is going to last, but I have those little replacement sheets. So what I did, I just, as I normally do with any new product, I just try to see how is this going to work out? Is this going to be quicker than wet sanding? Is it going to be better? Maybe it's going to be better and quicker, but of course, this is all kind of in the eye of the beholder. But the first thing I noticed, it really does what they advertise it does. It doesn't gum up and stick up with now, it may, I may have to qualify that. This paint is dried three or four days. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But if you do this the next day, a lot of times what I've experienced, even wet sanding, you, you pick up a little chewing gum in the sandpaper, and it gets frustrating because it puts little dents in the soft paint. Now, wiping it off and taking a look at it, I was pretty impressed with the first, first five minutes. I wanted to figure out in my own mind how long this was gonna last, but I didn't wanna beat a dead horse, so I had plenty of the sandpaper. The little samples are already cut. Of course, it's 2000 grit, and again, you, you basically just pat that, put that right on, and it's, it's kind of self-explanatory. And I was also wondering at this point in time, I'd have to have two very similar parts like two side covers for a motorcycle and do one wet and one dry and time it and this and that. It, it, that's not the purpose of this. We're not trying to prove who's right and what's wrong. What I'm, after this whole experiment was over, the one thing I really did realize is the product works. It works the way they say it does. And of course, if you block sanding 
anything anything that's a flat edge you can block sand that's really convenient with that that little block is a handy tool i'm assuming even if you wet sand that that little robo block that comes with the kit is a a very handy little tool but anyway there are parts of it i have to sand by hand so and and when i say hand i mean without a block with my bare fingertips so the, the easiest thing to do is to get all of the parts sanded with a block sand it dry constantly wipe it off with a clean paper towel otherwise you just the dust that's there is you just the the sanding residue gets ground into the sandpaper unnecessarily and having done this part it's got a lot of flat edges a lot of sharp corners you don't want to use a block on a sharp corner you want to try to minimize how much you spend on the corner but right away i realized if i were wet sanding this it, it might take the same amount of time or more or less but i can't address that right now in this video now see there's a little trough on this part and i just the paper sticks to your fingertip it's really really handy that it sticks to your fingertip like that so what i did i found that aside from the fact this is the only time i've ever done this this is something i'm going to want to do possibly in the future on a, something like a gas tank something like a a bigger part a more a more elaborate part what this is really made for is when you have a dent in your car and you fill it up with the the touch-up paint and the touch-up paint is higher than the surface around it if you look on the internet it shows you how to block sand that down and then buff it but in this case it seems like this is going to work better than i even thought it would it works it works better on my fingertip to get in all the valleys and of course avoid the main thing avoid all the high spots and i like to go around the edges because when i'm going to buff this i'm going to buff part of it by hand i'm going to buff part of it with my harbor freight buffer and i want the whole part to be flat and as defect free as possible before i go to any kind of buffing compound before i ever even take out the compound and this is this is a little bit time consuming and probably a little bit boring to watch but i did want to leave this part of it in real time so you get an idea rough idea of how much sanding actually is involved because it's not just two or three swipes of the sandpaper d and of course this part had a lot of little dust spots in it and little fish eyes and everything but it takes a little bit more time than you think it does you want to wipe it down look for those little defects again back and forth two three four times i work on the fluorescent lighting which always seems to be a little bit better at finding defects in the paint if you go out in bright sunlight a lot of times you don't see the defects you kind of cheat yourself because then once the part is buffed you do see the defects so getting the part flat at this point in time using the toll cut and again it's 2000 grit dry with a block or a fingertip and depending on how fussy you are the fussier you are the flatter you can get the part at this point in time and any defect you can get out now it just makes the buffing that much quicker and that much easier now the compound i've used in the shop successfully for a long time 8065 it tells you to grit the grit quality down there and but it's a great combination with 2000 grit paper and this compound seems to be a it's a, it's a formula that's worked well for me i've used 1500 grit and this compound not wonderful because it takes longer to get the sanding scratches out i have tried 2500 and 3000 not quite as good it just takes longer to sand but the thing that works the best in combination is 2000 grit wet or dry by the way even a wet sandpaper and then i like to do this is my little test and i always do it in real time all my tutorial videos i take one little part a microfiber just put some of the compound on shake the compound before you actually use it especially if it hasn't been used in a while sometimes the grit will sit settle down to the bottom and just using a circular motion a back and forth motion really doesn't matter because you just want to get the sanding scratches out and this shows you in real time roughly how long that takes to do and if it takes a lot longer than that it probably means the paint isn't old enough it means the paint is soft 
But you can see right away that's going to come up. Now, the trick is here, I want to pick all of the flat spots and use my little Harbor Freight buffer. I want to see how this is going to be in the real world. There's a part that that part is flat, that part back there is flat. So I can take, and this is the Harbor Freight buffer that are under $20. Always use a new pad. Whether you think you need it or not, the pads are only a few dollars and they make a big, a big difference in the final, the final part, the way it actually looks when it's done. This is this is now the this part with the buffer goes a little bit faster than buffing by hand. But again, there's parts of every every piece that we paint, there's parts that are appropriate to paint and and buff by hand and the paint and sand by dry sand wet and every knowing what part is appropriate to do is part of what will make it easier for you now all of these flats yeah you can use the buffer on them but then down in that trough that ditch or around the corners you de definitely don't take a buffer and buff the corners you you have a tendency to go right through so that's a just a problem that i've run into many times especially with new when you try to do this a day or two after you paint and the paint is really still soft then but and then if you didn't if you missed the the video of painting this part it's probably about eight or ten videos back on my channel along with hundreds of other painting and buffing videos so a lot of good information out there but this is a new thing the toll cut first time i've used it and thanks to john poth here it looks like we've added another product to our toolbox and i love to have a toolbox full of products and once i'm done colonite insulator wax is just i i don't know how to if you've never used it how to describe how good it is it is really good quality stuff you can get it from amazon and it's reasonably priced it's it's not as expensive as some of the other stuff that i've bought and had in my shop and was kind of disappointed about now the trick is <laughs> and they tell you put it on let it sit for a minute Take a brand new clean microfiber, wipe it off, and then go out to a garden hose and put water on it and see what happens. I did it to the hood of the car one time on a video, and I couldn't believe the water just fell right off like Niagara Falls. It was pretty cool. But anyway, this only takes a minute to put the wax on, and that'll protect it for the time that I'm putting it back on the motorcycle because it's a chain guard. It's going to be with its grease and grit, and I'm going to try to wipe everything down before I actually install it back on the motorcycle. But having that wax protection on there, definitely in my in my estimation, that's a great idea. Now, and always, always at the very end of this, look around and if there's any spot you missed, because a lot of times it's easy to miss a spot. And you look, oh yeah, because it's so easy to do it when you're on the workbench and so hard. Sometimes when you mount it to the motorcycle, it makes you crazy to try to go and get that spot clean. So after mounting it on the motorcycle, a couple of bolts went right on i realized it it was just a great day of experimenting and i did learn something and i did enjoy the fact that i have one more product to use when i want to do some custom painting or some preparation for buffing the part came out perfect and everybody knows that i love this color blue i i wish i could buy a car but this color blue a minivan of course <laughs> But anyway, the whole thing here is when I was customizing the MT-09, I have a very specific thing that I like about customizing motorcycles. There's things I don't like, things I do like. I love the blue. And every time I painted a part that was either flat black or I made a part and painted it Yamaha blue, I liked the bike better. And not everybody did. Not everybody does or will. It's just personal taste. I love the silver wheels and every time I can add another element of blue into this motorcycle I just think overall I'm going to be happier with it and so some of the information that I put on this video I hope is useful there are so many other painting videos buffing videos on our channel model airplane videos train videos travel videos and now we've added to it having toll cut videos.
So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button if you did, and thank you so much for watching.